If the anime industry is pulling in $24 billion per year, how is it possible the artists are getting paid as low as $2 an hour? Let's find out. Today we're going to dive deep into the inner workings of the anime economy and figure out just how such disturbing figures are even possible. To understand the economics of the anime industry, first we need to look at just how and why anime are made in the first place. Other than some obvious exceptions, just about all anime start in the exact same way, with a middle-aged salaryman daydreaming about money, typically one that already works for some sort of publishing company. They look for pre-existing toy, video game, or most commonly manga properties that have potential to reach a wider audience. With dollar signs in their eyes and the secret formula in their briefcase, they set to work forming a production committee, which is essentially just a group of companies that all stand to profit from the anime's success. This could include game studios, record labels, or even a town's tourism department. A typical season of anime can run anywhere from one to three million dollars, which might sound expensive to you, but it's actually fairly comparable to a season of American television. Although the breakdown of this budget can vary from anime to anime, we can assume the percentages are somewhere in this range. For an episode of anime costing $172,000 to produce, the script would be $3,200, directing $8,000, production $31,500, animation $45,000, finishing, background art and sound $19,000 each, photography $11,000, materials $6,000, editing $3,000, and printing $8,000. But with numbers this high, it would be far too risky for a single company to front the entire cost, in case they end up making another X-Arm. But with the risk spread between several different companies, they are all able to survive the occasional flop. So you've got your idea, you've got your funding, time to hand it over to the artists, right? Not even close. Now comes the exciting part, where a bunch of businessmen sit around a table and discuss the best way to tell the story, design the art, and cast the characters in order to make the maximum amount of profit. Since each committee member has their own different, often competing agendas, this phase of production can stretch on for ages, deciding on the most minute of details, like how long to make the girls' skirts. Technically, the original creator, usually the manga artist, has final say in how things turn out, but who in the right mind would want to sit in on these meetings when they could be at home drawing? So the majority of the time, a surrogate is chosen from the publishing company to represent the interests of the author. But once every possible revenue stream has been explored, from figures to body pillows, the important businessmen hand things over to the anime studio to do what they do best. And here's where the root of the $2 an hour problem lies. The commissioned anime studio is paid a flat fee, and it is up to them to deliver a polished final product on time, turn a profit for their own business, and pay their hundreds of employees a fair wage. And unfortunately, most of the time, they have no choice but to completely ignore that last requirement. As with most creative industries, from VFX to game design, there is virtually an infinite lineup of anime artists just waiting for their opportunity to break into their dream field. This oversaturation of potential employees strips the artists of all their bargaining power, and is the reason for the incredibly long hours and low wages. With entry-level animators making around $1.75 per frame, they often have to work over 11 hours a day just to scrape by and even then, often require assistance from family to live in the third most expensive city on the planet. Despite every individual artist overflowing with talent and creativity, they are seen as replaceable. Over the past few years, this dichotomy has been brought center stage by the news, but so far very little has been done to rectify anything. But even if all the underpaid and overworked anime artists joined together and demanded higher pay, all that would accomplish is bankrupting the studios, who themselves are just barely scraping by. The whole system is one long race to the bottom, competing for lower and lower costs. In order to build a more sustainable and fair anime economy, the entire system would have to be rebuilt from the ground up, which I think is exactly what we're going to see happen in the coming years. But before we can make predictions about the future, first we need to look at how the anime industry is currently generating that $24 billion per year. Inverse to Hollywood box office, the anime industry still makes most of its profits domestically. I guess the world just isn't ready for this. As I touched on before, anime aren't particularly designed to turn a profit in and of themselves. The meme online is that anime are just long ads made to sell manga, and that's why it's oh so common for incredible shows to never be completed. <coughs> Kubikiri Cycles, <coughs> Konosuba, <coughs> but I never fully understood just how true that was. 
When watching TV in the West, if anyone actually still does that, there are these things called commercial breaks, which annoyingly get in the way of you finding out whether or not they're gonna love or list it. This is because the channel that you're watching has paid great sums of money for the rights to broadcast a show and need to recoup their investment through advertising. Well, if any of you 90s kids have ever stayed up way past your bedtime flipping channels just looking for any alternative to going to sleep, then chances are you've stumbled on the paid programming channel, which ingeniously thought to themselves, hmm, why don't we just skip the content and only run ads? And thus the sham wow was born. I can't live without it. Well, with some obvious exceptions, this is exactly how anime works. Rather than the TV channel paying for the rights to air, say, Horimiya, Horimiya pays the TV channel to air their show. Let me repeat that. The anime producers pay the network to run their show. And it's not cheap. Anime being ads for manga isn't just an expression, it's a literal fact. And if you're wondering why the system only works in one direction, it's because compared to anime, manga is incredibly easy and inexpensive to produce. It only takes a handful of people to create a volume of manga which can then retail for $5 and potentially sell tens of millions of copies. So whenever you see an advertisement for an upcoming anime, you're literally watching an ad for an ad. Adception. But the financial success of an anime doesn't live or die here. It is not uncommon for an anime to take up to several years to break even, let alone turn a profit. The goal of the production committee is to turn on as many slow dripping faucets as possible to slowly fill up their bucket with a diverse stream of revenues. Rights are sold off to video game studios, merchandise companies, streaming services, and foreign distributors like Funimation or Crunchyroll, all of which have to share a percent of their profits with the production committee. And if the anime studios themselves aren't on the production committee, they aren't seeing a dime of those profits. It makes little difference to the studio's bottom line whether their work has Demon Slayer levels of success or X-Arm. The only creatives that see a cut of the profits are the director, head writer, original creator, and sometimes the OP artist, who all receive varying amounts of royalties. Surprisingly, one of the most lucrative revenue streams are DVD sales. And if you don't know what that is, Ask your grandma. These relics of a bygone era are sold with two to four episodes per disc and will easily set you back somewhere between 50 and $100. Yes, you heard me right. To own the entire season of your favorite Yuri show could cost you over $500. Now you might be asking yourself who in their right mind would spend that much money, but this is anime fans we're talking about. In fact, the prohibitively high price is the very reason why DVD sales are so important. In the past, they've tested lowering prices, but it only led to a marginal increase in sales, which makes perfect sense since their target market are hardcore collectors. The utility and price of the thing isn't what drives them. The DVD market works much like gacha games. It only takes a few dedicated fans, known as whales, to fund the entire game so that the rest of the user base can enjoy it for free. 2,000 people buying the entire season would bring in $1 million of revenue, which to me begins to paint a better picture of how the anime industry operates the way it does. But chances are, if you're watching this video right now, you don't live in Japan and might be wondering just how you pressing play on Crunchyroll factors into all of this. Does any of your monthly subscription make its way back to Japan? Or is it going straight into Papa Sony's pockets? Before the rise of Funimation, High Dive, Netflix, and of course Crunchyroll, foreign audiences depended on fan subbing and sailing the seven seas, which isn't a result of cost. It's a result of convenience or lack thereof. The best way to stop the Captain Jacks of the world is to make legal streaming easier and more convenient than the alternative. And you could definitely make a convincing argument as to why that's not currently the case, but let's just ignore their faults for now. Basically, any foreign profit is better than no foreign profit. So anime producers sell the rights to streaming, merch, and home video to companies like Crunchyroll for anywhere from a couple grand to tens of thousands of dollars per episode. This fee is called the minimum guarantee, which basically transfers the risk off the anime producers and onto Crunchyroll, who pay the MG up front before making a single penny. If Crunchyroll manages to recoup the MG, any further revenue they make is split with the production committee. So yes, technically the money you're spending on streaming and merch is supporting the Japanese anime industry, but of Crunchyroll's 70 million users, only about 3 million of them are paid. 
The rest are just streaming anime for free, while sacrificing a few minutes here and there to watch an ad. Let's assume Crunchyroll makes a high CPM of $10, meaning for every 1,000 views an ad gets, Crunchyroll makes $10. With 4 ads per episode of anime, a smaller anime getting 20,000 views would only make Crunchyroll $800, which wouldn't even cover the MG, let alone the subtitling, hosting, and marketing, and don't even consider the idea of making a dubbed version. Bye. So if this ad-supported model is so unprofitable, why does it even exist? Because Crunchyroll are smart enough to know that removing it wouldn't force people to pay monthly. It would just send them off to one of the countless and easily accessible, not so legal streaming sites. Ad supported anime is only feasible for a company like Anilog, who have a huge back catalog just sitting around collecting dust that they could easily throw on YouTube at little to no cost. If you'd like to learn more about Anilog, I have a whole video on them linked in the description below. The bottom line is one month of a paid subscription would equal watching like 200 episodes of anime with ads. So we've basically got another small set of whales carrying the entire industry on their shoulders. Just to be clear, I'm not making a judgment call or recommending you pay monthly, I'm just laying out the numbers. At the rate the global anime market is growing, it should overtake domestic revenue before we know it. And with such drastic shifts taking place both technologically and socially, it is clear that major change is coming. With society becoming more and more digital, the barrier to entry for creating anime is getting lower and lower. As long as you have a computer and enough time, a single person could create an entire anime themselves and release it online at next to no cost. Say, the way Makoto Shinkai did with Voices of a Distant Star. And if he could make that himself, imagine what an entire studio could create without any of the restrictions of a production committee. With several studios binding together to create Anilog, and Studio Trigger coming out with a Patreon, it's clear that moves are being made by the studios themselves to gain greater independence. Major studios like Ghibli and Kyoto Animation already have the luxury of forming their own production committees and being far more picky with the projects they choose to work on. Whether it's Netflix, Crunchyroll, or a future KyoAni streaming service, the future of media is obviously trending towards blending production and distribution together together into a little ball and calling it an insert studio here original and I don't see why anime would be any different. This system also has a ton of concerns and drawbacks but overall I think it would provide a much more stable economy where productions aren't just closing their eyes, crossing their fingers and hoping enough people buy their DVDs. Now I don't know about you but anime has affected my life in such a meaningful way and I want to do everything in my power to preserve this incredibly unique and artistic medium and support the artists actually responsible for creating the anime that have brought me so much joy. It feels to me like the industry is heading towards a fork in the road, and all we can do is hope that it goes down the right path. But no matter what happens, it is undeniable that anime artists deserve better. All I ask is that you continue to support the anime industry in any way possible, so that they can continue to make the breathtaking, heartwarming, and magical stories that we all know and love. Thanks for watching.